the goal of the Gnostics for Jung just rang true as absolutely this is the individuated story of of religion where it can only happen inside of you and that the Gnostic sects were experimenting with ways they thought could facilitate that that our task is to discover the image making function inside of us to be able to clear out the complexes that are confusing us the compensatory function in Gnosticism was the spark of the divine is within each one of us as compensatory to various forms of organized religion, you know, in a time when there was huge diversity and change. So don't don't worry if the outer world structures aren't all unified and stable. You've got what you need of the divine within you. And in Ion, which is volume nine, part two, when he's talking about the evolution of the image of the self, which often is equated with divinity, he starts with um, animalistic images of the divine and it progresses forward. And so Gnosticism was an important kind of movement in the development of the concept of the self. And what Jung was seeing is that every time that we have a conscious experience or attitude, that it is immediately paired with its opposite somewhere in the unconscious, which is a little bit different from shadow, although it can have some relationship. But this is a really radical idea. So, for instance, Every time we fall in love with someone and we're conscious about loving them, its opposite is a nodal point in the unconscious, which could be indifference or perhaps even hatred. Now, we're only conscious of the love part, and that's the Sophia that's fallen into the world. There's only one piece. But somewhere in the unconscious is the opposite. Now, Jung would say, something rather radical, which the Gnostics also believed is you couldn't feel love if its opposite didn't exist. That there have to be opposites in order for the experience to exist. So it is the tension between love and indifference that actually creates consciousness and that both are required, even though only one might be held consciously. Now, that can seem strange to us, but our dreams will often help us experience this because we talk about compensatory dreams. So I love, 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 love somebody. Oh my goodness, we're perfect, we're divine. And then we have a dream about walking in on into the bathroom accidentally with our beloved on a toilet and we're disgusted, which is like not at all what you're thinking <laughs> about consciously. But the opposite is being offered because in terms of psychological hygiene, both of these things need to be held in order for us to not be in a state of splitting. Mm -hmm. It, it's really um, very interesting that the um, compensatory function in Gnosticism, as I'm uh, just at the edge of learning, was the spark of divine of the divine is within each one of us, as compensatory to various forms of organized religion. You know, in a time when there was huge diversity and change. Um, so don't, don't worry if the outer world structures aren't all unified and stable. You, you've got what you, what you need of the divine within you. And in individual psychology, when you're madly in love with someone, the compensatory function puts that little spark of, that person is also really irritating. <laughs> inside us, uh, so that instead of a split, there's hopefully a balance. The, 
that if we can acknowledge the dream where, to our shock and dismay, uh, we saw our beloved sitting on a toilet, if, if we can take what that means, what that symbolizes of uh, the shattering of an illusion and idealization uh, and integrate that, then it will save us, hopefully, from just that little part of splitting that my beloved is all good and all wonderful. Um, that no, it's both. A and Jung was, I would say it was so core to his theories and work, is that there is, sh is light and shadow. There's love and disgust, irritation, hatred, indifference, a whole list. Uh, so that we don't fall into those uh, splits of all one thing and nothing of the other. So one of the, talking about this tension between organized religion, such like Catholicism versus Gnosticism, is something that Jung actually writes about Murray Stein does an, an incredible job with this. The collected works of Murray Stein are being published. I recommend them very highly. He's, he's such an incredible apologist for Jung's work and makes it come to life. So Murray writes about Jung and Christianity, and he's scoured Jung's work to try to put together a cogent sense of what Jung was trying to reach for which is scattered among many different places in his writings and in his struggles with his friend Victor White, who was a priest, and, and the great tension between them. But Jung has a sense that religion is changing, which goes to the Max Zeller dream that you have mentioned many oh times, Deborah, <laughs> that um, there is the ancient idea of the Catholic Church. Or the church as an institution, which is not simply Catholicism, by the way, and that that served a purpose. And Jung also um, had a good time with astrology. He talked about the age of Pisces, which is the age of the fish, and the fish was also a symbol of Christ, and that human beings did in fact benefit from all of this structural assistance, even benefited from the enormous amount of rules that were imposed upon them. Because rules force us to be conscious. When we think about the book of Leviticus, or even the Talmud, let's say, there are, there are rules for, for every little thing. Now, whether or not that pleases God, I don't know. But for a stage of evolution in human consciousness, going from being very instinctive to paying attention and making conscious choices about every little thing, helped the growth of ego strength, the growth of consciousness. But Jung said that this is this is ended, this this in in this next eon, human beings are going to outgrow this idea of being told and being given doctrinal things and repeating rituals as a way of imagining that we're having spiritual experiences. And uh uh just in this moment, because this is related to Gnosticism, um, can you tell that story of the uh, Max Zeller dream? Because it's really relevant. Yeah, I was just going to go back there. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, because um, not everybody will know about it. And it it is a wonderful image. Uh, Jung had um, a patient uh, named Max Zeller sometime uh, right after World War II. And um, Max Zeller was a psychoanalyst um, in California who went to see Jung because of uh, being disturbed by the state of the world, which was right after World War II, was distressing for all kinds of, of very big, big reasons. And um, like a lot of us, I, I'm, this has happened to me. Uh, he had a dream, and he was about to leave Switzerland, 
and then he realized that he had forgotten to tell Jung his dream. And he, so he called him up and said, oh my gosh, I was there yesterday and I forgot to tell you this dream. I can't believe it. And Jung said, come right over. And uh, so the dream that Max Zeller had was that uh, he was uh, watching a vast temple being built, and it went on for as far as the eye could see. The foundation had been built, the first floor was there, and everywhere people were working on building uh, columns. And each person is working on building his or her own column. And uh, Jung said, you know, yeah, he said, this is a dream people all around the world are having, people you don't know in Russia and India and everywhere. And he said it was a dream of the new religion, um, by which he did not mean a doctrinally organized uh, belief system. But, um, you know, I have loved this dream because it's such a great way of integrating uh, the opposites that we've been talking about, of individual development, or what Jung called individuation, what the Gnostics um, imaged as the spark of the divine, um, with a, a communal or collective uh, endeavor. So everyone builds their individual pillar. And it is part of a vast temple. So it's a wonderful image of a both our individual selves and creative energy as part of a greater whole. So young, what was it? That, yeah, new religions being built take a couple hundred years, but something new is really going to happen. I hope not. <laughs> And um, and Murray really pulled together from various sources what Jung was imagining that this new religion would look like. And what he had a sense is that people would be liberated from these doctrinal rigid ideas, that they would gain access to the deeper parts of their own psyche, to the self, that in their fantasies and dreams, that they would self-produce images and symbols that actually help them to individually connect to the self, rather than assigned symbols from an organization. And that this would give them a true sense of their connection to the divine, that would be a kind of gnosis and internal wisdom and knowing that would link them to this transpersonal center, and that through collective sharing of dreams of this nature, that we as a community of humans would generate and share the various images that connect the individual to the transpersonal. And that would be the new way, or something like that, the new way that human beings would forge this relationship. And so now we can understand how Jung then brought this into a therapeutic goal, a psychotherapeutic goal, and said, the restoration of the ego self-access is the great work of Jungian analysis and is unique and different from other kinds of psychotherapy. That our task is to discover the image-making function inside of us, to be able to clear out the complexes that are confusing us, and to begin to discover the images and symbols that are generated by the relationship between the ego and the self and to, through that, have our own kind of personal mythology that works and is active in facilitating this relationship to the deeper parts of us. The language may sound very exalted, but 
in a practical sense, this is what your day-to-day dreams are trying to do. Your, your every morning dreams are trying to nudge you into this, into this place. And so the Gnostics, or at least the goal of the Gnostics for Jung, just rang true as absolutely this is, this is the, the individuated story of, of religion, where it can only happen inside of you, and that the Gnostic sects were experimenting with ways they thought could facilitate that. There's no way for us to know um, through the Nakamadi um, fragments whether or not it was or wasn't effective at that time. But the goal and the images, that made sense. And we are still trying to find a secret spark inside of things 